The next thing we want to do is to create some places for us to drop these squares into and then um, have them kind of stay there. <laughs> so um, let's duplicate these three objects and then I'm going to set their color. So I have all of them selected and doing all of this at the same time. There we go. Set it to be just like a little bit lighter than the background color. So these are places that we can drop our objects. Now, um, we want to do the same thing as what we did before to, um, so we don't want to be able to drag these, these objects. We want to um, make them, put them on a layer called drop spots. So we don't want to be able to click and drag these, but we do want to be able to check this layer and see if we've hit any of them. So um, once we have created that layer, we then have to assign it. So now we have three objects. They all um, they all have colliders on them, and they're all on the drop spots layer. Okay. So if we go back to our script, we um, basically want to um, create a another layer mask. So we'll do a public. Um, make sure you spell things correct. Layer mask. We'll do pop this drop spots mask. Drop spots mask. I will assign this in our variable. There we go. Save. And um, once we have the mask that we want to look for, we need to figure out when we're checking if we've hit that. And we want to check if we've hit a drop spot when we let go of the mouse. And so after we set is dragging to false we are going to um, basically, uh, I'm going to make a separate function and kind of put our code in here. So I'll do, say, check for drop. So what is check for drop? Um, so when we check for drop, we're going to um, do another rate cast. So I'm just going to copy and paste these two lines here and instead of draggable mask we're going to put drop spots mask so we're checking if we've hit a drop spot and then um, if the hit dot collider is not nothing we will do a couple things so first we just want to debug dot log the um, if we've dropped onto we're just going to do a little message um, So we're going to print out the name of the object that we dropped it onto first. Okay, so we hit play. Open up our console. So we are clicking and dragging and dropping. So looks like that's working. A couple issues, we can pick it back up again. It doesn't like um, snap into place. That's a little bit of an issue. We want it to like click into place and then also it's behind the drop spot so that's another problem so let's fix the layer order we can see the layer order here in sprite renderer so order in layer is zero order in layer is zero so when everything's on the same layer basically what the bottom of the layer is whatever comes first and then every subsequent option as you go down is drawn on top um, so we could either just drag this like that or we can um, change the for the three white squares we can change their order to one so you're just moving them on top of the other objects so let's just make sure that that worked okay cool now we are on top great so it looks like it's working this is printing out appropriately um, so let's comment that out and then we will say okay so if we drop it onto a spot we want to set the position of the selected object which remember we have saved in a variable so selected object dot transform dot position will set its position equal to the position of the drop object so it dot collider dot game object dot transform dot position um, and then let's say just so we know for sure um, we're going to change its color to be red so we'll 
let's say select object dot get component render dot material dot color is equal to color dot red. Okay, so we're gonna drop it, snap it into place, and change it to red. We'll go up here. Okay. Okay, so even if I just kind of I'm a little off, it's okay. It'll snap into place. But I can still drag it. So what we want to do is because these game objects are on the draggable layer, as long as they're on that layer, I'll still be able to drag it. So what we want to do is we look here, there is another layer called ignore raycast. So once we snaps into place, I'm going to change its layer to ignore raycast. Um, so that selected object, we will say selected object dot layer is going to be equal to layer mask dot name to layer and then we'll give it ignore raycast and this is basically um, so layer masks have a um, a index they're numbered zero you know all the way up to nine um, but you can so they're sort of identified by their number but they also have names so if we want to give it the name we just have to define the fact that we are giving it a name instead of a number so that's what that is doing um, and then once I do that, um, just to double check that I won't accidentally do anything um, with anything more with the selected object, I'm just going to set that variable to nothing. So I'm just going to like deselect basically that object. And we'll click save. So if I hit play, we can snap it on. And then now I'm no longer able to pick these back up once I've put them down. Um, 